Hey guys, welcome back to the finale of Nights Into Dreams HD. In the UK, it's Boxing Day. We're still high on Christmas cheer, and I don't know about you, but I am getting ready to have some nice cold cuts. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm sure I will be as well, to be honest. Mate, it's all about like cold turkey, leftover turkey, with warm chips. Uh, well, not necessarily warm chips, but definitely all the leftovers. Oh yeah. So basically the way that these extras are going to work, the first batch is kind of showing all the little extra things that you can do within the levels um, with explanations at the bottom because I wanted people to be able to tell what the hell was going on in the non-con version of this. Uh, less commentary for us, I guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, they've got some really nifty extras, so you can play as Riala on uh, April Fool's Day. Uh -huh. I believe if you get to the boss fight, it is against knights. And I think if you actually finish a level as Rihanna, then you get the option of playing as him all the time. Oh, that's cool. I think. I'm not 100% sure on that, because there's a whole bunch of differences between the Sega Saturn version, the PS2 version, and the HD port. It's all a bit muffled up. Man, they really took advantage of this play on, like, a different time of day or year thing. They did. Like, it's all to do with the internal clock of your console. So, I mean, this was all recorded in a single day. It was just me going out, change the time and day, go back in, <laughs> yeah, etc, etc. And it's really cool. I have to say, you chose, like, the perfect Knights-esque font for these explanations. Well, it is literally the Knights font. Ah, okay. I, I, I went hunting. Somehow I managed to find it. Nice. I don't know how, but I did. And I was just like, right, it's being used. It's time. <laughs> But yeah, basically, like, Elliot and Clarice get all different outfits. Um, Halloween and specific... Well, Halloween and Christmas specifically are the ones where you get knights into a different outfit. Nice. Or obviously April Fool's Day. Uh, but there are a bunch of other things that I didn't actually manage to show off. So I think if you play Spring Valley in a certain time, um, you can get snow on the ground and a slightly different song playing. Yeah. Um... There's the whole thing with the different types of weather in Christmas nights. Didn't get to show off that. It was just like, there's a lot here. And I just thought, I'll go for the best bits, really. Yeah, yeah, you're picking the best of extras. Like, if you showed everything, it would just be like, here's rain, here's sleet, I guess. Exactly, and it's just like, it's not worth it. There's a lot else to cover. I think Sonic Adventure 2 did a similar thing to this. Like, there would be, like, Halloween costumes and such. I honestly don't know, because I... Like, I played Sonic Adventure 2, it's actually... Well, it's the first Sonic game I ever played, not that it's actually the first Sonic game I ever finished. I think the first Sonic game I ever finished was actually Unleashed. Nice. I mean, if ever we dis did decide to go through Sonic Adventure 2, I know it's already done, but if we ever decided to redo it, and I was part of that, I'd be able to tell you my horrendous time with Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> well, as you can probably <laughs> tell from Sonic Heroes, we are trying to get back into Sonic games a little bit. Not all the time, because uh, we're kind of past that stage, but every once in a while, so... Yeah. Yeah, Heroes is another one where I started it and then had a horrendous time and then didn't touch it for years and then came back and finished it finally. Well, it's the same game four times with minor variations. It's not like the story actually splits and you have, like, different level orders, like in uh, SA1, so I don't blame you for that. Well, yeah, I mean, it was mostly that... So I got stuck on Egg Emperor with uh, Team Rose. So then I was just like, right, I'll try and do Team Sonic's story. And then got stuck on... Uh, I think it's Frog Forest, or... It's, it's the one with the hideous bit where you've got to leap... Uh, through the alligator section. Right, right yeah, and, yeah I, I can see why, yeah. Yeah, and it just glitched, and I hated it, and I put it down. Uh, so, it was one of those things, and Sonic Adventure 2 is like I got stuck on Crazy Gadget for years, and never touched it. So what's going on here, mate? Uh, so basically, it's just more showing off all of the uh, costumes that you can wear, when you can play the play as them, all the different title screens, because there's loads. Although, frustratingly, to get them you have to go into the main menu and then back out to see all of these title screens. Uh, but they are really cool. And I, mean, I love Christmas Nights' title screen. It's great. And I love this specific thing. So if you play 
Christmas nights between 12pm on the 24th of December and 12pm of the 25th, Santa will be flying around in Christmas nights. Ho, 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 nights, let's save Dreamtopia. <laughs> that looked like a fucking JPEG image. Well, it pretty much is a JPEG image, just sort of flying around, and <laughs> it's, it's really very little, but it, it was just like, oh my god, this is so cool. It's a nice touch, I'm not trying to be overly <laughs> cynical on fucking Boxing Day of all things. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, that, that just made me happy. Like, why the hell you would be playing Knights at that specific time frame is beyond me, but it's there if you want it to be anyway. I think more games should do this, because I imagine it wouldn't take that much work to like build it in, but it, it keeps players coming back. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's a really rewarding thing, because it, kind of, it does reward you for coming back and playing, because it's just like, if you come back and play it on this day, then you can see this, and it's going to be so cool. Also, I have to say, Clarice has got an incredibly short skirt on there, I don't know why. I wasn't going to say anything, but it seems to be a running thing. Yeah, I think that they went a lot more modest come the sequel, with the outfits of the characters. But that's all of the kind of in-level extras that I was going to show off. This is the Nightopian collection, basically sort of the A-Life thing that they created for Knights. So all the Nightopians have their own lives, artificial life, basically. Okay. And in each level, you can kind of... See all of them here, you can hatch them by paralooping the eggs. Ah, okay. I'm seeing the beginnings of the Chow system in Sonic Adventure. Yeah, and it's it's quite cool, it's a bit useless. Um, you get an achievement for getting a Mepian, which is, I believe, when you paraloop a Nightmarin and a Notopian together. I'm actually going to show off what a Mepian sort of looks like in a minute. Basically, I'll show you the Nightopian collection of my old save file. Okay. Um, because I actually had a Mepi in there, and I don't have one to show off here. But basically it's like a more villainous Nightopian. And I think this, this is my old save file, so just going through all of them just to show you what it looks like. That different coloured egg is a Mepian egg. So you can tell what they look like in the levels, but... Uh, whether you'd actually be able to spot them whilst you're playing is a different matter. I love the one with the jackhammer. And uh, this dark coloured sort of Nightopian that you can see that's building a snowman is the Mepian. I wish you could actually see its face, but you can't. It's basically just an evil Nightopian, basically. And that is all of that. <laughs> yeah, it's about as much time as we could spend on that feature. Yes. Now, also in Nights into Dreams HD is the original Sega Saturn version of the game. Nice. It's not exactly the original Sega Saturn version, but it looks like it anyway. Yeah. Um, one thing I didn't show off in the main thing is that there's dream data, so you can look at the courses that you have to take, uh, which is quite a nice little touch. And just to uh, make this as quick as possible, I'm just showing off the boss fight. Oh, man, this, this is sad graphics as fuck. Yeah, so this is what the original game looked like. And, I mean, yeah, I suppose it, it looks quite good for Sega Saturn standards. Yeah. The use of colour just makes everything pop, so that's one way to get around the kind of primitive 3D graphics, I guess. I don't think the gameplay... Well, the control is one-to-one -one with the original, but... As you can see, everything is much more compressed in terms of the design, which I think does help. So this is all I'm going to show of the Saturn version, because we've already seen the entire game, you don't need to see it all again. <laughs> pretty much, mate, pretty much. Man, listen to that guitar go crazy. And there we go. So yeah, I mean, if you want to face all of the bosses just on their own, then you can do. You just have to kind of go to press, like, something like Y or whatever to get the Nightmare in up. You can do that in both modes. Which is a really nice thing to be able to do. Oh, it's X, but... Is this all we're showing of that mode? Uh, yes, because I mean, what what point is there, really? Oh, oh, it's a Richie tradition, the concept art. Well, exactly! <laughs> I love how we had a part of No More Heroes that was just fucking trading cards. Yeah, it tends to happen. I think the worst instance I've ever had of that was the wonderful 101. Uh-huh. 
because I had a part of the gallery, uh -huh. which was long. Right. I had a part of the wonderful 101 files. So basically they had files for every single character in all of the models. Right. And that was like, that took forever. It was brilliant, but it took forever to go through. Yes, that is nice. Nice again. Basically, the way that this is set up is that you have a kind of page of galleries. So you click on the knights picture, it's got all the concept art to do with knights. Ah, okay. This has got all of the art to do with the bosses, etc, etc, etc. And in the background you actually hear, I think it's the knights theme, so the full version of the knights theme song from this game. Which you don't actually get to hear anywhere else, oddly enough. And I think, now that I remember it, that guy is actually called Claws. Makes sense. Well, yeah, because he's got the horrible claws. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. <laughs> so, yes, this is just a nice little thing. You can't get the last bits until you've beaten Christmas Nights. So, as long as you beat the story and Christmas Nights, you collect everything in here. I do, I do like how Christmas Nights is the proper finale of the game. Well, yes. I mean, it's a wonderful little thing. And it does work very well as a finale, because it's actually a contained story. It does what I wish the main game actually did. Of introduce what's happening with the opening cutscene, have the gameplay, and then have the closing cutscene. Rather than just having the intro cutscenes on the title screen. Oh god, there's going to be a lot of this art, isn't there? Yes, there is quite a lot of this art, um, but... That said, there's not a whole lot else to do other than look at this. We have a short trip to the music thing, and we're going to have a look at the movie theatre. There's a video in the movie theatre that we're going to watch, because it's not one of the cutscenes of the game, it's actually an optional extra, and it's actually really informative. Oh, well, that'll be good since there's no subtitles. <laughs> yes, I mean, if you want to watch it, actually go and look at the non-com version, but it's it's really nice. So I suppose, whilst we're doing this, I should probably point out some of the extras that got removed from the Christmas Nights game, which could have been in here if they wanted to, but they decided not to. Ah. Basically, after completing the stage with each character, you were given the chance to unlock presents, which is why this whole bit is called Presents. Right. And um, you had a memory matching game of character portraits. Although, uncovering a title, well, a tile with Riala instantly entered the game. Most of the content included various CG art galleries, which is what we see here, trailers, etc. But they also had a karaoke mode, so you were able to sing Dream Streams if you wanted to. No thanks. <laughs> I'd be down with that. Um, in fact, well, I, I like it when that happens. Really love it in the wonderful 101. What, when I don't sing? No, when, when there's a karaoke <laughs> thing in a game. Uh, okay. It's just fun. Uh, it also unlocked a time attack and link attack mode. Basically, you can aim for the best time or highest link record in Frozen Bell. Which is really neat, and it's something that they actually expanded on in... Journey of Dreams because I believe you could play each level as time attack mode and that was really cool. They had the music player which is present in this game and obviously Sonic the Hedgehog into Dreams which was completely removed through the PS2 release. For some reason. Maybe they just couldn't get like the license to use it properly. Sega couldn't get the license from Sega to use Sonic. Look, right, I'm just pulling ideas out of my arse here. <laughs> maybe, the, maybe they lost the license for like five minutes, and in that five minutes, Yuji Naka said, nah, mate, nah, we're not putting this in the HD one, sorry. <laughs> maybe. Um, but this is actually a fun fact. So this game, so Christmas Nights, the yeah. original Christmas Nights, is Sonic the Hedgehog's first true 3D appearance in any game. Well, okay, well, I just want to point out, Sonic Adventure, the first one, not DX, was the first proper 3D Sonic game. I don't know why people keep saying, no, that was Sonic 3D. That's isometric platforming. <laughs> it's not proper 3D. Exactly. It's sprites at the end of the day. But yeah, that pretty much covers everything that was uh, removed. Which, it, it feels odd that they did that, but... Oh, well. Usually, like, I ain't got time for the finer parts of game design. He's too busy driving Ferraris. Pretty much, yeah. 
Like, you sound confused there. It was kind of a running gag that the Sonic crew used to have that Yuji Naka just likes driving Ferraris for some reason. Don't ask me why, I can't even remember how it started. <laughs> it's the same with all in-jokes, they, they find a way of starting and then never leave. Yeah, try not to do in-jokes when you can, they're very selfish. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I was trying to actually write a little blog post about uh, in-jokes slash references earlier today, it didn't go well. But basically, in jokes slash references slash intertextuality can be so helpful and make something really wonderful to experience. But they can also be very alienating. And it's just finding that balance of when to use them, how to use them, and how many of them to use. Right, that, yeah. That's where you need to be careful with them all. Okay. That, that's me going into full on English <laughs> critic mode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can probably also tell to like tone of the voice. Like I go, I go from really kind of chatty and hyper to, uh, well, this is a thing and this is another thing. Yeah, I wouldn't have it any other way, mate. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Jesus, the full-on white of that background kind of blew my retinas out. I know it's so bright. I don't know whether it's the way I'm rendering these files or what. But white always comes out so bright. I, no, I think it was just. Well, yeah, maybe you did oversaturate. It was probably my fault, but it was going from the black background to the full on white that did it. Yeah, I don't know why they thought this was a good idea. Just like, just put them all in the same background. But, oh well. I'm just quite happy that this artwork's here, because sometimes you don't always get, like, really high quality concept art available outside of the games. So it's nice having them in the games, because then that means you can actually rip them, and don't always rip them, because that's obviously technically slightly illegal. Uh. But then actually having the artwork is just a really nice touch. Okay, we've got about nine minutes left here, Reggie, so there better be some good stuff. <laughs> well, you get to have a look at some wonderful Knights memorabilia. What the fuck am I looking at here? Um, badges, stickers, all sorts. I think this might actually be fan art, potentially. Or fan created stuff. I think Sonic and the Black Knight did something similar. That looks like official art. That's definitely official art. So I don't know what the first. I think the first bit of stuff might have been like official stuff for fans, like official merchandise and stuff. Ah. Uh -huh. I'm not really sure, but it is nice to see. Always do like when people make plushy. well, plushy versions of characters. It's always adorable. Like the, uh, the Mumbo transformations. Ah, oh, yes. I never got a chance to look at that uh, image of the plushy pumpkin thing, so uh, show me that afterwards as well. I will have to try and find it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will find it. I'm determined. There's the plushies. I kind of want them. You're right, Elliot. What's going on, mate? <laughs> just Sorry, so adorable. Metal Top Nights is making me laugh. Wow, they even did stuff for Christmas nights? Evidently, yes. Man, DLC was a big thing back in the day. Any contacts for these? Um, I think these are to do with the soundtrack, as okay. you can see there. I think that was something that was on the insert. Because they did actually release the soundtrack to the game, which is really neat. I'll say one thing about Sega and Sonic Team, they always do like really cool promotional stuff. And I mean they... so actually at present, uh, the you can get the night soundtracks on iTunes or Amazon MP3 if you'd like. I just need to interrupt it. You know we've covered the game so far, how minuscule the story was, and then you just had like reams after ream of like characters describing what the story was about, when really you could have just done it in a single paragraph. Yeah, I mean, that is actually available in Nights Into Dreams HD. I really should have shown it off. It's in, like, the manual bit. Uh -huh. Um But I was just like, no, that is way too much reading. Is it translated? It's all translated in the manual thing, which is a really nice thing. Okay. But it is just, like, there's so much text. Okay, this is Christmas night concept art. Jesus fucking Christ, this background. It's bright. Congratulations! Only this winter. Oh my god, we're playing this illegally. I 
But yeah, I think the way that I was meant to deal with this concept art and gallery is go kind of left to right, left to right, left to right, down each row. Uh, but I was just like, well, I'm going to go down the left page and then I'm going to go down the right page because that's how books work. Richie doesn't play by anyone's rules other than his own. <laughs> and this is just kind of the drawings of the cutscenes for Christmas Nights. Storyboarding. Yes, essentially. My god, there's 19 of the friggers. I know, there's there's loads. And they coloured all of these, and it was really wonderful. Wow, they actually did some work. I can, I can just see you like, slowly going faster and faster for him. Well, at this point it was just like, well, everybody's already seen these, so we can just skip, because this was just the plot. Yeah, we had an entire part dedicated to them. But that's that. A uh, little bit of a jump, and we are into the sound test. So you can listen to all the sound effects, all the background music. You can just listen to anything that you like. Which is really nice. <laughs> For a second though, I thought every track was going to have the word dreams in it. No, they, they weren't that not. Although some of the uh, level background music have weird names. Not sure I feel comfortable around a track called Paternal Horn. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Sonic Team? Yeah, they're nuts. <laughs> yeah, that's pointing out likely, I guess. So, we, 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 we staying here long? Uh, no, we're going to have a little jump out in a minute, and then we're going to go into the movie theatre. Awesome. Basically, that allows you to watch all of the trail, well, all of the cutscenes in the game. Although, frustratingly, you can only get the two Christmas nights cutscenes if you A rank both stages. And that was not happening. Well, we've already seen them. Yes, so what we are going to do is watch the Sega Heritage video, which is basically just a lovely thing detailing knights and a little bit about the Sega Heritage behind knights. Well, again, if you want to watch this without us talking over it, youtube.com forward slash hellfire playthroughs. <laughs> exactly. I actually want to listen to this. I'll turn my volume up a little bit. Don't worry, it won't bleed through. But yeah, it's, it's a wonderful little thing, because I think it's got um, Takashi Izuka. I'm not one to talk, but I always forget Izuka's teeth. <laughs> I'm not trying to say anything, but they were front and centre there. Yeah, they they really, really, really were. Yeah, let's leave it at that. I don't want to be too mean on this, the most holy of boxing days. We had numerous different ideas that we proposed for having a flying character. But yeah, this is going to go into the kind of backstory behind the creation of Knights as a character, the fact that Knights is genderless, and for anybody who's been having an argument in the past few parts about the gender of Knights, Knights is genderless. Okay. Um, but the reason of that is because that means that people can put their perceptions onto Knights themselves in their dreams, so... And also, like, the playable characters are a boy and a girl, respectively. Yes, so it's just like, if you want, you can see Knights as male, if you want, you can see Knights as female. It yeah. doesn't matter, because Knights doesn't have a gender. So, you shouldn't feel odd about dualising with Knights. Because that is the technical terminology for what the kids do with Knights. I think I remember at uh, Summer of Sonic, I forget which it was, it was either 09 or 11, it's uh, kind of been muddied up given the past few years, but uh, someone asked Izuka, he was like there answering questions, and I was I was there and I actually got to witness this firsthand, what he regretted most when it came to Sonic, or something along those lines, and he said, big the cat's fishing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I forget the actual like reason why, but he was like, oh, maybe we should put this in the game. Yeah, probably would have been a good idea not to, but... Yeah. Oh well. Now, apparently, whilst Izuka's on screen, apparently in 2010, he did comment that he would be very interested in making a third Knights game should Sega's management decide to develop one. Obviously that was five years ago, when things were slightly better for Sonic Team. Because obviously we'd had Unleashed... So we were sort of heading back into the good years, and then obviously everything went to hell. Mate, Unleashed in the good years is a, a very divisive topic. Well, no, but Unleashed marks the start of Sonic being good again, whether you mark it as the last game in the bad set or the first game in the good set. Um, I would say it straddles the middle point. I'd say it's more in the good set, but... 
we wanted a character that could it it it, 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 it straddled that kind of barrier and so that's why we went with a gender neutral character but i, I mean as but i said i would love to see game. another night's game the team we and it would just be it would it would make my day working on Sonic if it was good anyway if it was terrible that would crush my dreams but and we'd already decided from the outset that we were going to make a flying game so now we have this game which in English you'd call a platform action game. Yes, we would. Except this was a platform action game without any platforms. So it's not a platform game, is it? <laughs> like a first-person <laughs> shooter with no first-person sections. <laughs> it's basically a flying simulator, really. That's a good way to put it. No, I think a puzzle game is good, because getting combos and whatnot, you got to learn the best routes and such. Yeah, I suppose, like flying... Simulator puzzle game. And then we'd try it out and it would Merge the two together. There was a lot of trial and error involved. The biggest thing for me was wanting to create a game world for knights that would be as close as I can't actually imagine Azuka being a part of Sega during those days. For me, he was always like more like late or well like, around two thousand five onwards for like the Sonic games. The first time I recall ever discovering him was like in a like article for Nintendo for Show magazine when he was talking about Shadow the Hedgehog. Yeah, but I mean, he was a designer back in the day. I mean, he's the lead designer on the original Knights. Yeah, well, that's about all the time we have, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great Christmas, and we'll see you next time for another Hellfire Commons playthrough. Bye for now. See ya.